You're watching Vini TV, the alternative wine media packed with broken English and passion for wine. And at the moment, we are in North Carolina, United States. And why are we in North Carolina? Well, I have a guy here who will explain. Why don't you tell me who you are and what you do? Well, I'm Malcolm Thompson. I'm the uh, Vice President of uh, Marketing and Innovation. Innovation meaning research and development for, uh, for Nomacork. So what exactly is Nomacork? Um, Nomacork is the world's largest synthetic cork producer. Actually, we're the second largest wine cork producer in the world. Um, you know, this we're standing in front of our world headquarters, which is based uh, just outside of Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, we also produce product in Europe. Our European headquarters is in Belgium and China as well, actually, to support the fast-growing um, Chinese market. Um, we started production here. Uh, we started producing our closures in, uh, let's say, around 1999, actually. And, um, and our technology is based on this proprietary process that's, uh, that's known as co-extrusion that allows us to produce a, um, a wine closure that has this very uh, uniform foam um, structure on the inside. And, an, and that foam is, let's say, coated with this flexible outer material um, which really serves the purpose of protecting the closure during bottling, which can lead to leakage in some cases, or oxidation. So, so it's, it's quite unique in that respect. While the foam, let's say, allows us to, to control the, the amount and the consistency of oxygen permeation through the closure into the wine. So this is, this is the basis of our technology. We patent that technology on a global basis. And as a result of that, um, it allows us to produce products that have clear advantage in the market and, and such that um, we've enjoyed uh, really tremendous success, only being business for uh, just over 10 years. Well, 1999, as I say, so it's so 12 years now. And, and now growing to a point where this year we anticipate um, selling roughly 2.4 billion closures, um, which is about 12% of, uh, of the global uh, closure market. So you could say that that's quite significant. Yeah, I, but I, I think I so. Think, I think many people are now wondering uh, what is what is the difference between a natural cork and your alternative closure and then let's say a screw cap. Okay. Um, well, you know, I think uh, different in, 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 in so many ways, but, but, but let's say the area that, that we've embraced, um, you know, with respect to closure performance really relates to oxygen management. And, um, you know, and very early on we realized that this was an area where, due to the nature of our technology, um, that we had some, some advantage in terms of our ability to tailor or customize, excuse me, <laughs> customize the amount of oxygen that, that permeates through the closure and also our ability to hold that in a very consistent manner. So, so based on that differentiation, you know, we've conducted a lot of research to understand exactly how oxygen influences wine development. And, and, and the bottom line is this, and we can say in no uncertain terms that closure selection influences how wines develop and hence influences the quality of the wine. So, and it's our contention that closures should, let's say, provide consistent wine development first and foremost and ultimately um, should allow wines to develop in a fashion that is consistent with what we say the winemaker intends or, or at least what the consumers you know prefer and and so our technology allows us to tailor that um, oxygen transfer rate as we call it and to hold that very consistently in the case of natural cork due to the no, nothing, nothing against natural cork I mean, I mean sometimes it can be very beautiful but um, cosmetically speaking but uh, the fact remains just by the simple fact it's natural there's an inherent variability or inconsistency associated with um, with with how it protects the wine against oxygen so not to mention cork taint and, and other factors that, that I think everybody is well aware of but cork taint is not the only source of fault as it relates to natural cork you also see a high degree of oxidation for example which is associated with too much oxygen you know getting into the wine and and just general variability or wine development that's very inconsistent 
in the case of, of screw caps, um, it is, it's kind of a mix because, you know, there are some challenges associated with screw cap use relating to uh, bottling, bottling practices. It's a little bit complex. And so there's a learning there that's required. And if that's not done properly, then you can introduce, let's say, a lot of oxygen into the headspace of the wine, which, which can affect um, wine preservation and, and also wine consistency. On, on kind of the opposite end of that, um, particularly with, with, let's say, liners that are based on this, this let's, let's say, serotin, which are very, uh, very tight um, closures, you know, if they're applied properly, then in essence, they, they let little or no oxygen into the wine. And, and what you see as a result of that is a higher incident rate of what's known as reduction, which is the complete opposite of oxidation. Oxidation associated with too much oxygen, reduction due to not enough oxygen, and certain sulfur-based compounds in the wine turning into, uh, you know, let's say, uh, components that have very unfavorable um, aroma, for example. So, so you know, so I think in the case of screw caps, there's there's opportunities to um, um, to optimize, let's say, both in bottling and also, you know, in, in closure design. Um, such that these kind of faults are addressed. There's a lot of debate going on between natural corks and screw caps and many favor screw caps because it's easy to handle and it doesn't let oxygen in and, and you know cork because it's romantic and where does where does Noma cork fit in and how does the consumer let's say in Finland uh, advantage of, uh, of having a Noma cork closure? Yeah. <laughs> I can't speak uh, specifically for Finland, <laughs> uh, but 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 I think you can you can make some general statements. But let's you know? say let's say a country f uh, yeah, far certainly, away. Certainly, certainly, certainly. Um, you know, I, I think in the case of a screw cap use, clearly there's a perception, at least, that um, you know, due to the basic nature, that it's it's easier to remove. You know, now if you were to talk to my wife, she she would give you a completely different perspective on that. She cannot get a screw cap off of a bottle of wine. I have to open that for her, whereas she can use a screw cap, uh, excuse, excuse me, a corkscrew quite easily and remove, let's say, a, a Noma cork or, or an internal closure. So I think that's a matter of perception. Generally speaking, and, and at least, you know, with the people that I know and our experience, the use of a, of a corkscrew is not a negative attribute associated with wine drinking. In fact, in most cases, it's quite the opposite. It's, it's, a, it's a tradition, um, it's preferred, you know, and, and depending on the setting, it's almost an absolute. In, in certain restaurants, and, uh, or let's say in a restaurant setting, um, there, is, there tends to be um, a reaction towards a wine that's being served that's, that's under screw cap, let's say. Um, so, so, you know, so that's kind of the screw cap side of things. In the case of, of natural cork, um, and you hear a lot about consumers have a preference for, for natural, let's say, versus synthetic, and we've done a fair amount of research. We're doing more, um, but we have done a lot already, and, um, and, and, you know, and the results are always very consistent. If, if you do not point out the issue of closure to them, in most cases they don't even notice. So in other words, um, in the case of a wine bottled under Noma cork or natural cork, in most cases, and as long as you don't say, you know, what do you think of this, you know, this wine that's bottled under a synthetic versus what do you think of this wine that's bottled under natural? Because in that case, you're bringing attention to it. That's not reality. In reality, a consumer buys a bottle of wine, takes it home, and opens it, and and so what's their perception? Well, it's it's our experience is the closure is not the area of focus unless they have a problem. And okay, in the case of a natural cork, oftentimes they do. It might be a cork-tainted wine or oftentimes it's breakage, difficulty getting into the bottle. This is not a problem at all with Noma cork. But in the case of synthetics, and you hear a lot, synthetics are hard to get out of the bottle. Well, the fact is that that is the category that, that we're considered to be a part of. And generally speaking, there are products in that category that have issues relating to ease of removal from the bottle um, as well as difficulty in reinserting back into the bottle. So all it takes is once for a consumer to take home a bottle of wine, 
have trouble removing it from the bottle, get it out, and notice it's a, it's a synthetic, and then that registers with them as they had a problem with this plastic cork, and we get a little bit, um, let's say, considered as part of that group. Um, but, but in the case of Nomacork, this is and our customers and official complaints relating to the use of our product, we don't have this kind of issue. So, but, uh, but it's something that we intend to do additional research around just, just, just to put our, uh, our customers at ease, particularly as we move into finer quality wines, which is directionally um, where we're going with our, our new product offerings, um, to just to, ensure, to put, to, as I say, put our winemaker customers at ease that consumers will not have an issue with the transition. Okay, so that's Noma Cork in a nutshell. Do you have any last greetings for people in Finland and the watchers of Vini TV? Um, well, you know, thank you uh, so much. Um, you know, for giving me this opportunity to talk about our products. Um, you know, um, we're very excited about about the future. You know, our, in the case of Noma Cork, our you know our uh, our primary focus about wine quality. So so you can talk about uh, a lot of different things as it relates to closures as well as other aspects of winemaking, but for us, you know, the most important consideration should always be about the quality of the wine. And, and our intention is to, to continue to, to do uh, research, to develop new products that, uh, that, let's say, allow these wines to develop in a fashion that maximizes your enjoyment as well as, you know, let's say, satisfies what we call the winemaker intention. So, um, thank you very much and cheers. Okay, I think that's enough talk and let's go inside and enjoy some wine. Thank you very much. <laughs>